It's interesting, we talk about Warren's talk, isn't he a legend? In fact, all of the previous speakers have been really, really great. But when Warren came and sat next to me, I thought, you fucked me up, you bastard. <laughs> really, really awesome. It's the first time I've seen him speak and I heard a lot about it. Very, very impressive. I love it. So, look, I want to talk about something a little bit different. There's a lot of talks about doing stuff and that's great. We all need to learn how to do stuff. For me, I went through that phase and then I hit another phase which was about being. And for me, I think one of the most important moments in my life was when I realised who I was and why I was. And these are questions we don't often ask ourselves. And so normally when people ask you, you know, who are you? We'll refer to our profession or you know, something that we do, something, a component of our life. But we don't actually know who we are. And so I wanted to inquire in that little space for a second here today. When somebody asks you, who are you? What's your response, if there is one? Oftentimes people don't even know how to respond to that question. And here's my learning through my life that I, that I realized that really made a massive impact on me. Once you know who you are, life is really easy. And all the struggle falls away. All of the doing falls away. Because when you know who you are, there's no such thing as a distraction. When you don't know who you are, the next shiny object will get your attention. Because you think that's going to get you to a certain place, only to realize that when you're at that certain place, there's another place to get to. When you know who you are, you realize there's nowhere to get to. Once you know that there's nowhere to get to, the whole world becomes your playground. You can create in a heartbeat, in an instant, any experience that you want to create for yourself here and now. And so I notice a lot of people around the world and human beings are incredibly the same despite their different countries, continents, languages, colors, backgrounds, education, teaching and beliefs. Fundamentally, we're so, so predictable. And I get to travel all over the world and have the same conversation with people and I've convinced them that the way they see the world is just one view of the world. And the minute you can open your mind to seeing the world through many different perspectives, now you vibrate at a higher level. And so get to recognize who you are and how you process information, how you process life, how you process your experiences, and realize that that's all bullshit. <laughs> Everything you think is true about you is bullshit. <laughs> Even you. <laughs> Here's the beautiful part about this though, when you realise that every thought that comes into your head is bullshit and the only difference between the thoughts that come into your head now and the ones that will come into your head in the future is the ones that you choose to keep and the ones that you choose to discard. And get really good at choosing the ones that empower the best of you and get rid of the ones that disempower and create the worst in you. Every single moment in life becomes a choice. Very simple, simple example. When I was a teena, teenager, which I once was, <laughs> anyone else been there? <laughs> Long time ago. I went through what teenagers go through. And, you know, I, I was blessed. I've had some massive success very early in my life. And so by the time I was like 18, 19, I was richer than most adults that I knew. And, you know, I made some great financial decisions and as uh, Pav said, make money your friend. My, money was my friend from about that height. And so as I went through life wondering why do people struggle, I couldn't get it. For me it was like, it's so easy, why are you making it so hard? Like everything, right? <laughs> and as I was going through this, in my teens I became so arrogant around this. When you give a lot of money to an uneducated mind. <laughs> it's a dangerous thing. And my arrogance took me to some interesting places, which I love. I'm, I'm really thankful I went through that phase. But here's what was really amazing, what, you know, when, when you get to a point of arrogance like that, when, where you're indestructible and invincible, there's a lot of positives around that, there's also a lot of dangers around that. You can become very destructive. Who knows some destructive people in the world? I used to be one of those. And so I'll give you an example, there I am on a Friday night discovering girls. Any guys discover that phase of their life? And you might have discovered guys, whatever, any, anyone? You discover the, the sexual, you know, let me go get some, you with me? And that was everything, that was the focus. And your parents saying, get educated, get educated, get educated. I'm like, no, I want to get someone, I want to get someone. It's like complete different directions. And so on a Friday night, I'm getting ready, ironing those crease, crease into the shirt and 
splashing our aftershave when you haven't even shaved yet and all those fun things you do when you're you know, kind of going through that phase of life. And my mum will say something like, Cal Pressure, you going out? <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> of course I'm flipping going out. I'm not doing all this to sit in front of the telly, am I? <laughs> I wouldn't say that, but that's what I think. And I'll say, yes, mum, I'm going out. Okay. So now I'm ready. Open the door, just about to, get, you know, just about to leave the door. And Columbo, she did Columbo on me, right? Cal Pressure, before you go, it's cold out. Have you got your jacket on? <laughs> I've got my jacket on. It's freezing cold. We're in England. Everyone's got their jacket on. I don't say that. I'm thinking this. Make sure you lock the door. We live in East freaking London. Who leaves their door open? Yes, Mum. Could you lock the door? That was just the half of it. Here's the best part. Four, five in the morning. No squeaks, no creaks. But somehow, before that key hit that lock, <laughs> Cal Pesh, you home? What? <laughs> this is like before CCTV days, right? Like, how does she know this stuff? What's going on? And for years, I had this kind of interesting relationship. I love my mom to bits. Best, best mother on the planet. But that part just always used to get to me. Whoever had a kind of interesting dynamic with their loved ones that creates all sorts of interesting buttons. Anyone experience that stuff? Yeah. Right. And I never knew what the hell to do with that, right? Because it's like, you know, what do you do with a person like You can't fix them, that's just the way they are, right? She's like, she's been like that all my life, what the hell, right? It's like, okay, you kind of just ignore those things. Years went by. 20, fast forward, I'm 24 years old, and more arrogant than ever. Like, really, king of the world. Financially, rocked it big time. I've been in a relationship now, six years, fell in love, crazy head over heels, was going to marry and spend the rest of my life in your fairy yet fairy tale relationship, health at its peak, friendship, I was the, you know, I was kind of the, the center of all of social attention back then, like every party was my party and everything was on, like really living that lifestyle, you with me? I was blessed to have experienced stuff that most people don't experience, like the TV stuff. And so I was going through all of this arrogant phase of my life for years and years and years, and life has a beautiful way of just when you need to learn some lessons teaching you, doesn't it? So there I was at the peak of everything, nothing could touch me. And bang, I get a phone call one afternoon from my cousin. He says, Cal Pesh, you've got to get home real quick. I'm like, why, what's up? He says, just get home. I get home, he jumps into the driving seat, pushes me on the other side, says, I'm taking you to the hospital. Okay, what's going on here? Now, at the time, my dad was in hospital. I knew it wasn't going to be good. We get to the hospital, I rush up to his room, and the bed's empty. And in that one moment, my whole life flipped at the drop of a second. I collapsed to the floor like somebody had ripped my skeleton out of my body. And I cried like I'd never cried in my entire life. 24 year old grown man crying like a baby, uncontrollably. Because my dad was my rock star, he was my superhero. My dad was the guy that I wanted to one day hopefully grow up to be a fraction of who he was and I'd be somebody. And there he was, stolen from me, at the age of 24 years old. I got so disengaged from my life, I shut off from the inside. I disconnected from all of my friends, my family, distanced myself from everybody. My brother, my mum, my sister-in-law, just really removed myself. Anyone been hit by something tragic like that in their life before? It can be devastating, right? And no access out, no answers. And it was during this time I spent two years in darkness, two years in pain, and two years so unengaged with my life, I went bankrupt within those two years. I went from being a millionaire to nothing on the street. Dog queue, signing on. I destroyed my relationship within six months with my dad dying. Six and a half years of amazing relationship, gone. No more friends, locked up in my room crying every time I saw my image in the mirror disappointed at who I was becoming, who I had become and who I was continuing to becoming. Have you ever looked in the mirror and been disappointed with who you were? Who's ever experienced that before? It's horrid, right? And with no answers. And I'm blessed that one of my friends stood for me more than I stood for myself, dragged me out of my house one afternoon, two years later, and took me to an event like this, all the way to Milton Keynes. So I went there kicking and screaming. Didn't want to be, didn't want to be there, didn't want to go. 
And I sat there, the speaker talked about how wonderful his life was, how everything was perfect. And then he shared how as a child, he went from foster home to foster home. His life really took some nasty turns. Got into drugs, was abused as a child, ended up behind bars, and changed his life around. And I, I went and asked him at the end of that seminar, I said, listen, I'm in trouble. But first of all, thank you for your talk. For the first time in two years, something's woken up. I need answers. What do you suggest I do? What's the next step for me to get out of my dark, dark world that I've created? And he said, I haven't got all the answers. I don't know what the next step is for you, because it's different for everyone. People ask me all the time, Couts, how do I do this? How do I do that? I don't know. Nobody knows, because your life is your journey. Anyone that tells you they've got the answers is lying. The only person that's got the answers is you. He said, here's what I'll do is point you in the right direction. Start reading. A couple of books, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. How to Win Friends, Dale Carnegie. He said, there's a whole bunch of books like that. Read them, feed your mind with great information. You'll unlock your own answers. I went on that journey. Within a couple of years, not only did I rebuild my life, I recreated it. See, if it wasn't for that tragic event, my life would have been very predictable. And so there's a blessing in every tragedy. No matter how tough it seems at the time, if you trust in the unfolding of the journey of your life and trust in your ability to step into greatness, you'll solve anything that comes your way. And you'll solve it with power and you're able to create more than you ever thought was possible prior to that tragic event. I want to thank you for listening. I hope I've given you some kind of idea of what's possible for you. You can create any life you want once you realize everything lies inside of you. Thank you so much, you've been awesome. Give yourselves a round of applause, thank you. Hey, so uh, I just realized in all the excitement of sharing my story that I didn't complete one section of it. Got into the audience and everyone's like, you hate your mom. I was like, no, I don't hate my mom. I love my mom, she's the best thing on the planet. Here was the point of that story, by the way. So all those years of destroying communication, I get to understand myself better and in understanding me and who I am, I realized that all my mother was ever saying in all of those years was Kalpesh, I love you, but I never heard it. I never had the capacity to hear those words. And so instead, I was getting annoyed at what my mother was saying. It was never my mother's issue. It was my issue always. I was destroying the communication she was giving to me, love and care. And when I got to see that, I realized I can own all experiences in life. Nobody can determine how I feel other than me. It doesn't matter what somebody calls you, how they perceive you or see you, or, or how they treat you, ultimately how you feel about all of that is down to yourself. That realization was one of the most powerful realizations of my entire life when I realized I own everything. When you can own every piece of communication that comes to you, through you, and out from you, everything transforms. You can really start manifesting and creating life the way you choose. It's all about choices. So I hope that kind of clears that up. Thank you so much again. Love you. Ciao.